Hello everyone, welcome back. You are watching Ham Radio Concepts. I am KJ4YZI Eric, and in this video we're gonna talk about another antenna for your mobile or base or attic or balcony or wherever by Compactenna. This is the Scan 3. Now, this is a little different than a previous video I showed of the dual band Compactenna that Dr. Jack had made himself with a patented design that gives you good performance in a small factor. And he sent me these two for review a while ago. I'm just now getting to them. And he also donated a couple door prizes for the Treasure Coast Ham Fest earlier this year. And a lot of people are always looking for something that's got performance that's not so obtrusive. Now, before I say this, I will tell you this. There's a lot of people getting into the hobby and a lot of people that are finding my videos and they're interested. And some of them are still waiting to get their license, but they're already out buying stuff. And I'm getting a lot of interest on how do I get licensed and what what's how do I understand what you're talking about. So hamradioprep.com, the link is in the description. Use the code ERIC20, you'll get 20% off on every code or course that you purchase. Now, they're a great sponsor to the channel, but I already have four or five people that have upgraded from general to extra. My wife is getting it, a tech technician class with Ham Radio Prep, makes it easier for her to understand. Pixie got uh, all the way up to an extra class and uh, within a week, a week or two, and I'm using it to get my extra. So hamradioprep.com, use the code ERIC20, save 20% on every course. And this will make a little more sense if you're one of those very new beginners. So with that being said, the Compact Tennis Scan 3 here is what I'm going to primarily have on my truck, this diesel here, because I always swore I'd never have antennas on this vehicle. And, uh, but I wanna have at least a GMRS and a dual band in here, okay? And that's probably what I'm gonna have. So what I wanna tell you first is I'm gonna show you or tell you the specs and then explain a couple things about this antenna because normally, I'll do that now. Normally, if you're a newcomer to the hobby, when you think of an antenna with good range and good performance, it's usually a higher level or a, a, a longer length or a higher mounted antenna, okay? This antenna kind of rivals that theory. And Dr. Jack has a tremendous quantum knowledge on how this stuff works, okay? Way more than I do. But I can tell you this, this antenna, or specifically both these antennas, give you a performance that you wouldn't expect for something that's only nine inches magnet mounted on your vehicle. For instance, this, this antenna here is designed to be mounted on the corner of a vehicle. Now you may say, well, that doesn't really look too good, Eric. Well, that's probably not where I would put it. I'd put it up here on the corner, either on the corner of the hood like this, or on the corner of the roof. Now, normally antennas wanna be in the center of the roof of the body for the best uh, ground plane or counterpoise. This antenna, in fact, is substantially omni and omnidirectional, meaning the signal goes out in all directions, even when you mount it in a corner of the vehicle. Normally, mounting it here, an antenna, would give you more range and reception that way across the body of the vehicle, opposite of the antenna. Whereas this is more omnidirectional, even on the corner of a roof or a fender or wherever, okay? That's different, normally. It's also um, very broad-banded. For something like this, this antenna right here requires no tuning. This antenna right here has no moving parts, no traps, no magic, nothing that you have to know how to tune. You don't use a tuner. It's just a one solid design NMO with a spring in there, a copper spring. It does come with the instructions, a gasket for the magnet mount and some dielectric grease. You want to put a dab of that on the threads. All these are hand tested. Every one of them are hand tested and they are made 100% in the USA. So that's some good deciding factors right there. But in a future video, I'm also gonna show you the difference in mounting this on a $15 Amazon mount, which is a no name, and a $60 diamond mount. And that's not saying don't buy the cheap one. That's not saying the diamond is defective. What that's saying is Every single antenna and every single vehicle and every single installation is different. There's a lot of requests and a lot of outreach. I hear people saying, I saw your video on this one antenna and I didn't get the SWR that you got. I sent it back, it was defective. I got another one, it's the same thing. Sometimes it's operator error. Sometimes you don't realize that just, if I have a 1.4 SWR, to, uh, 1.4 to one SWR here, I'm gonna show you in the next video that moving that changes it to a three to one. Okay, and then moving it here, it might make a 1.2 to one. It's all dependent on, oh, and then you can put it on this mount and you might get a 1.5 to one in the same spot. It all depends on the antenna installation. Don't think that your stuff is defective and send it back. Now, I'm not talking compact antenna, I'm talking anything. Diamond, Comet, Gigaparts, wherever. 
MFJ, it doesn't mean that it's defective. It just means that every single fingerprint or every single installation is different. So let me read about the specs here for a second and I'll do some sweeping on the analyzer. Now, compact high performance scanner radio antenna, 100 to 15 megahertz of range. It was 1500 megahertz. How did I say 15 megahertz? So that means you don't have to, let's say you're in a balcony or apartment or even mobile with a scanner. This one antenna for receive purposes will do 100 to 1500 megahertz. That's quite a wide range for a little antenna like this. No dice cone needed, no ground radials, nothing. Optimized for three wide frequency bands. Check this out. VHF 136 to 174 megahertz. So that encompasses the two meter band, uh, 144 to 148. Uh, also uh, uh, VHF Marine 156, multi-use radio 151 to 155, upwards into fire, EMS, you know, for scanning and stuff like that. UHF 378 to 512 megahertz. Now for ham, you'll be more focused on 440 to 450 for repeaters and for my sake, GMRS ready at the same antenna, 462 to 467. So I could put a GMRS and a dual band in here and have a coaxial switch with one antenna and cover three different bands. Imagine that. It also covers 750 to 960 megahertz. So for scanning purposes, 800 megahertz for trunking, for law enforcement, 900 for P25 on ham radio, digital. And you're going to learn a lot of that stuff in terms in hamradioprep.com. So digital and analog optimized for public service, safety, government frequency bands, police, fire, sheriff, emergency medical staff, highway, uh, state highway patrol, homeland security, U.S. federal military. Also superb for transmit, receive on, like I said, multi-use radio service, GMRS, 2 meter and 440. Antenna is constructed in a fashion that will allow 100 watts at VHF, 75 watts at higher frequencies with a duty cycle, max transmit time of one minute in any two minute period. So one compromise from having good performance in a small form factor is if you're at 100 watts or 75 watts on those bands and you're transmitting for one minute you gotta wait about two minutes in between now if you're using it for 25 watts maybe you get a longer transmit time but with a little bit smaller size of good performance comes a compromise of transmit time Best transmit SWR results are seen with an antenna mounted at one of the corners of the vehicle roof, hood, lid, or fender. Performance pattern is substantially omnidirectional when mounted at a corner. As a receive antenna, Model Scan 3 performs efficiently or excellently at non-corners such as roof centers and well, as well as corners. So if you're using it only for scanning, you can put it in the middle of your roof or the middle of your hood or somewhere in the middle. But for transmit purposes for SWR, you're gonna wanna mount it in the corner somewhere, okay? Uh, and I'm going to show you, uh, probably what I'm going to do is, on this video, I'm going to scan with the analyzer on my work truck. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm getting a better SWR and range or reading on that work van. And I'm running out of daylight. I don't have enough time to go around every spot on the vehicle and find out where it's the best. But I can tell you, right about here, it's about a 1.7 to 1 SWR, but up here it's a little bit higher. Now, it could be in the back, it could be in the front, I'm not sure, but I wanna get this video finished. So I'm gonna show you where I know because I've played with it on the uh, work van. So that's what we'll use for a test. And uh, the gain is nominal three plus, or three dBi, okay. Um, Due to properties listed above, performance is greater than predicted based on gain alone in non-line-of-sight environments, which is the world we live in. So usually, VHF and UHF are line-of-sight, which means basically, you know, you can work a space station 100 miles above the air with nothing in between, but line-of-sight with trees and everything in the way, as a curvature of the Earth, you lose performance gain uh, or reception, but this actually works better at non-line of sight, okay? So each quality is, each antenna is quality tested made in the USA. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to put this um, on the, uh, this antenna mount here, and I'm going to put it on my truck. We're gonna scan three bands, two meters, 440 with GMRS, uh, be four bands in, and then 900 megahertz okay i'm going to show you that all those bands are acceptable in performance with swr on one antenna watch the next video that's showing you know difference in mag mounts and then the video i got coming up where i have almost every rig expert antenna analyzer in my possession right now thanks to gigaparts and i'm going to show you about using analyzers testing feed line testing coax and why you need one instead of just hoping for the best when you stick the thing on your vehicle okay so i have the antenna mounted on the front corner and the very first sweep I'm doing, if I can see, is 140 to 150. And you can see the frequency on top and the SWR on the top left. 
right there would be a 1.0 to 1 at 146.400. So there's 146 is 1.05 to 1 FWR. 144, 1.2 to 1, 148, 1.1 to 1. So not, I mean, it's perfect on VHF. Okay, so I've calibrated now and I'm sweeping 425 to 470. That should cover the UHF uh, handband and GMRS. Now, watch the marker here, okay? Frequency is up here. The SWR is over here. Now, watch this. I'm going to go to, look at this, 440, 1.5, 445, 1.3, 448, 1.4. Okay, so no more than 1.4. 1.5 across the entire thing. Now we're going to go up to GMRS, which would be 462, 1.8 to 1, up to 467, 1 1.6, 1 1.6. So 1.8, uh, 1.6 on GMRS, totally acceptable. On the same antenna, we'll do GMRS and UHF and if you're way down here for some reason 425 1.2 to 1 all on the same antenna it's Actually satellite would be somewhere like what 430 434 1.5, but oh, you'd want to use a directional for satellite, but you could probably receive a satellite on there Now this is just incredible. I don't do much at all on 900 megahertz, but watch this Usually the 900 megahertz bands the 33 centimeters usually has a 25 megahertz offset 902 and 927 would be like the offset for repeaters, 25 megahertz split. Now look at this, 927 area, 1.8 to one, and over here at 902, 1.0 to one. I think that's usually your transmit frequency. So look at that though, that is just awesome. Less than a one, a one point, let's see, 1.8 or less on 900. Now this is on the same antenna. So again, three or four different bands scanned on one antenna. Okay. And I'm going to show you now the comparison on a next video on what this would look like on a whole nother mount. This is on the Amazon mount right now. Imagine if I put this on a diamond mount and I got a better or worse, not saying the diamond is bad or wrong or, or defective. It's just every antenna couples with every mount differently on every vehicle. Okay. So just using the analyzer and showing you the re resonance or performance on one antenna for four different bands is quite impressive enough. I'm going to save the on air. I've talked to one person on uh, Simplex and a couple of people through repeaters. And I even turned the repeater down again to zero power output. The repeater's about five or six miles away, and I was full, you know, full intelligible into the repeater. I know the antenna works, but I'm going to save the comparison of, you know, people want to say, well, I want to see you make contacts on it. I made contacts on the uh, dual band to Jim, W2JKD down in Vero, about 11 or 12 miles on Simplex from this driveway to his. Now, what I'm probably gonna do is, I'm probably gonna use a, another video and I'm gonna put both of them on and see how much more gain one has. And then I'm also gonna switch the magnet mounts and see if the magnet mount actually you know, affects the performance even if the SWR doesn't change. That would be interesting to see that even though you have a good SWR, maybe the performance changes if your mount is not exactly coupling with the vehicle correctly. So I want to get more into these videos, a little more education and trial and error. Uh, but the antenna, as far as I'm concerned, is definitely worth it. Having an antenna on a vehicle where you don't see it much and think balconies, uh, attics, people have used these, um, you know, on a filing cabinet in their house because they can't have an antenna, their antenna restricted. This is great for those types of scenarios. So it's not only because I don't want to see a big antenna on this vehicle, it's because people may not be able to have a big antenna or they want something that's effective enough for hurricane season or checking to a local repeater without having to do some extravagant thing in their apartment. So thanks for watching. Check out the compact antenna dual band video I did. Check out hamradioprep.com if you're interested in getting licensed. Check out DX Engineering and Ham Radio Outlet. Links are all in the description. They stock the compact antenna. And uh, check out more videos on my channel, and we'll see you soon. This is KJ4YZI.